Hi, this is Daniel Posny, and this is called Shifting Perspectives, and it's about 15 to 20 minutes on a certain topic. Uh, we want to remind you about the men's retreat coming up in October and more things that are happening at our new property in Cornville. Go to um, the, the hummingbirdhouse.org and find more information about that. More information about what I do in Sedona can be found at ultimatepotentialcoach.com. And uh, we have a studio in Sedona and uh, we're always doing sound healing and breath work and coaching and counseling. And my wife does womb healing. And so um, engage with us there or here on the property. So we just started to um, develop something here on the property that's really starting to get really, po really popular. Um, it's something like um, someone would come in with a group of people and walk the medicine wheel, which is a tool, Native American tool to help you balance out your life. And then we move down to the 108 steps that lead down to our sweat lodge. And it's a walking meditation down these steep steps all the way down to where the creek flows by the property. And then there's time in purification within the, the lodge with some hot stones and then jumping into the creek. So something like that, that's what's become very popular. They have a real unique um, experience. And of course there's coaching and counseling going on, wisdom, you know, through the whole thing. So today, uh, this one I need to take a deep breath on because uh, something in a, a session the other day triggered this up and um, all these, this information has just kind of been flowing out of me and writing it down. And as I'm writing it, I'm going, wow, this is, this is really good stuff. And it's kind of edgy. So um, it's one of those ones that uh, I'm going to put out there and I'm going to wonder, gosh, should I have really put that out there? But it's another one of these ones, it's, it's hard not to, because uh, it kind of, it touch, it's going to touch on some, some pieces of us that we don't really like to look at sometimes. So are you, if you're ready, we're going to go into this. So this is called How We Sabotage Our Gifts. And the, re, the way that this came about was I was in the session the other day and I had really about a half an hour with a couple of people and with this woman. Um, she was saying how um, she's a real people pleaser and she really just gives and she's got this heart for God and, and that uh, the way that she said it was her heavenly father uh, blessed her with this gift of love and beauty and she'll see people on the street and she'll give them some kind of hug or a gift or I love you or something and it's all really beautiful until she says that I feel unworthy and you know, our, our mind kind of uh, wants us to believe that we're doing good work. But if you look at this from a purely energetic thing, if you were to be able to see all the energy of what we do and what we give, um, there is something that knows the truth. And, uh, you know, when I was a kid, there was that margarine commercial with Mother Nature. And, you know, you can't fool Mother Nature. And it's like, when I think about the times that I've given from this place that I want to do this good work, and yet I hate myself, that the energy that's coming out isn't pure. You know what? It's got a vision of uh, staticky, staticky electricity. It's not really pure and clean. Yes, it's still feeding the systems, but the signal isn't really clean. So um, that's what I'm talking about. That's kind of what's coming through in this one is that um, you may believe that you're putting out something that's it's coming from your heart, but if at the same time you don't love yourself, there can't be pure love in that moment. So this is, this is what we're going into. Take a deep breath. Here it comes. Trauma, real or perceived, guilt and shame. You were an unaware, unwitting participant, and yet your mind said shame unworthy of love, of God's love. It says you should have done something. You should have said something. You should have known better. But God did not say this. Your mind said, doomed, punish. These are remnants of old religion. And sometimes in seeking ret retribution, you imagine how you would commit similar acts from your own pain. 
In your most private and conscious moments, you know your own destructive thoughts. But this is where others have committed these acts. But you can break the chain. You separate God into a person so that there's a judge and a punisher. Our ego doesn't like the thought, but in another body, in another time, you could have committed similar acts because you weren't prepared for forgiveness and love in the moment. And honestly, when I, if I'm really, really honest with myself, why is it that I'm such a supporter of women? And I wasn't really, a, I don't think I was really taught this. Maybe I was taught by my father and how he treated my mother. But then again, my mother had her own problems with him too. So where did that come from? I didn't, I didn't go to a school for this. It wasn't drilled into me. And yet I find myself in these positions, you know, maybe there's some deeper psychological reason for it, but I, I wonder sometimes, is this the flow of energy? No, this isn't punishment. No, this isn't reward, but maybe it's the flow of energy that in some other existence, in some other body, I'm doing the opposite. I'm not supporting women. I'm actually abusing women. And it's, it's that part of this whole message that's coming out right now is that, wow, could that be true? Well, what can I do? I can love that part of myself. I cannot condone that thing, but I can love that part of myself because otherwise what happens? That energy, that unforgiveness, that um, blaming myself and, and following that path of punishment, it just leads into more punishment. But what can I do that's so radical well, I can think about that part of me, that, that version of me, and just bring him close to me. Just bring him right into my arms and say, I know, I know you're seeking love. I know you're in pain. And this is the way that you put it out there so that someone else will know your pain. Come here, come here. And even though this is happening, I love you. I don't condone what you're doing, but even though, just come close. So it's, it's that kind of a, a thing. So I want to Make sure that that's in there. <clears throat> All right, let's continue. You try, so also re remember that this message that's coming out, it's not necessarily to you unless you can resonate with it, but it's really to the woman that I was talking to the other day that I only had a half an hour with. And now if she was in front of me, I might say some of these things, but then as I'm reading what came out, um, maybe it's for me. So you try to redeem yourself now by being born again or serving others through the blessing of your heavenly father. But your serving is rarely pure of heart since it is tainted with egoic guilt. You think you are blessing others while you feel unworthy. You believe that if you do enough penance, you will redeem your sins. But it's difficult for you to imagine that there will be no punishment for you or anyone, and there will be no reward for you or for anyone, only alignment with love. So what we're doing is that we're removing anything that's not in alignment with love. And some of those things we need to experience so that we know what they are. Realize that your version of God may have been limited and suited your, the idea your ego had to punish you. Let me say that one again. Realize that your version of God may have been limited and suited the idea your ego had to punish you. Stop limiting God as only a benevolent force and expand into everything, everywhere, as all things, in all ways. Wow. Look into that. As everything, in all ways. That could, there, there, there can be only God. So it just, it, it kind of in, invites us to really expand our version, our idea of what God is. Stop giving the abuser or per perpetrator, perpetrator the power. Forgive the victimizer similar thoughts as you have had, but you took no action on. It is not the man who pulls the trigger, but the boy. It is the wounded boy who strikes out, not the man. There is no man, there's only the boy. 
The boy desperately seeks love to be returned to him. Heal the part of you that secretly envisions taking violent action. Acknowledge that it is not you, but an aspect of you, your egoic mind that creates these distortions. Giggle at its delusions. When we can acknowledge the bully, abuser, victimizer within, and forgive it and heal and integrate it into our life, we will be liberated from our ego's tendency to dismiss and hate that part of ourselves. What if we acknowledged and loved all parts of ourselves the same way that we acknowledged bell-bottom chords in the 70s, or the Ford Pinto, or our first kiss, or a baby trying to figure out scooting forward we can change our mind at any time to whatever brings authentic love without judgment into our hearts. In short, question. Question your idea of yourself. Is it true? Is it really, really true? Just focus on what is true, not perceived, not believed, not thought. What do you find? Is your idea of God the highest it can be? even higher than that. <sighs> deep breath. I know that was, a, that was kind of a lot. That was kind of a, a deep topic. It really kind of questions our idea of ourselves and our separation with other people and how we judge other people and they shouldn't be that way. And we need to have things in place so that you know, everybody aligns up to what is good. And if those people aren't good, if they're, they're, they cause harm to me, then they should be punished. So we find that the only one that's punishing is us, society, humanity. But the thing that guides humanity doesn't punish. And that's a, that's a hard concept to get into. And it's, it's not something that we're taught from some religions and some movies and some ideas that there is no punishment, but there's also no reward, but we're, we're taught that so that we'll, we'll keep us in line. But what if we pulled away the judgment of ourselves? What if we pulled away this, let go of the idea that we're separate from this idea of God? What if we expanded our idea of God that it encompassed not only ourselves when we're in a religious or spiritual moment, but in all moments, When we ask ourselves, where was God in that time when I was being punished or when I was being abused? God was there, but not in the way that you might think. In the way that there is nothing that is not God. That at the, at the smallest core fragment of creation, it's all God. And at the largest creation, it's all God. But we need to, at least I kind of invite you to shift that into a more expanded view of this ununderstandable idea of this ineffable concept that we call God. And that's why we're always over the ages trying to fight over what the, what the real thing is. And every time we start to get close to it, we lose it because it's not meant to be understood that way. How, can, how could we? If we could understand it, it would be a thing. It would be a material thing, and then we, now we've lost it. So imagine if the way that you've been giving in the past was from a place of great intention, and yet back here, you weren't allowing people to come into you because you didn't feel worthy, you didn't feel enough, you didn't feel lovable. Now imagine that, you sh that you've got a, like a twin version over here that for some crazy reason loves itself. For some crazy reason, it said, even though I've done some terrible things in my life, I love myself and I forgive myself. And I fill myself up with love for myself, not because of the things that I've done, just because there's this force that animates my being. And there's this love between that force and the physicality of this character that I am. That's the love that I connect with. So no matter what I do, no matter what I say, no matter what I don't do and don't say, in this life or any other life, I have that, that that's just there. 
And so I fill that up. I fill myself up with that realization, with that love. And then I can't stop it from coming out of me. Imagine the work that you could do from that. All you practitioners, all you therapists, all you healers, all people that are working with people, imagine the work that you could do. And it, it might look the same, but something is different. Something is different than the, than of the energy that comes out there. Man, if you could see the, the, the purity of that energy, if we could see that as a color, <laughs> like when we did something, we played a flute or we did some breath work or some sound healing or did some counseling and what emanated from us was a color and the closer that you got to colors pink and white, the more pure it was. And then you could see that when you weren't completely loving yourself, it would come out as a, as a darker color, maybe as a, a blue or a green, but not quite into that higher frequency. How the actions might be the same, but the energy behind it will be different because you're coming from this different source. Ah. Hmm. Yeah, I know it's not easy. I know it's difficult. And yet, and yet you could change your mind. Even though that there's this self-hatred or guilt and shame, and even though that's, that ha that, that's been going on in the past, yep, you can change your mind. There's going to come a time when you have no choice but to change your mind. What if you practice that? Like, it's the oddest thing. Isn't it the oddest thing that we choose to listen to the destructive thoughts that we have? We choose to listen to the, the thoughts of our mind that say that we should feel shame and guilt and, and all these feelings against ourselves. <laughs> I invite you to kind of take that to court, take that to litigation, question that. Isn't it true, Daniel, you're that, that you are actually a loving being? Isn't it true that you've done a lot less mistakes and a lot less destructive things to other people than you have beneficial and loving things to people? Isn't that true? Isn't it true that you've had more amazing relationships than you have had crappy ones? I really needed to kind of really truthfully look at everything of my life. And it brought me to this realization that I'm a, I'm a pretty awesome person. And so are you. If we strip apart all the, the beliefs and stuff that we've had about ourselves. And when we do, we get to be this liberated from our old conditioning and um, give out and give to other people so much more effectively and purely and authentically. Okay, so how do we do that? How do we do this thing? Well, it's, it just, it's a process. And it's just, as you have thoughts come up, and before they come out as words, I'm always this way, I have a problem with this. It's just a practice of acknowledging what's coming out of your mouth. And then the next step down is to acknowledge before it comes out of your mouth, but you know, as a thought. So you kind of catch them before you, they become manifested. So everything starts out as an energy as a thought. And then if it's thought of consistently, it becomes manifested. So we're kind of working from that way that as it is an energy, and then as a thought, we recognize it. And before it comes out of our mouth, that's, that's when we kind of know that we, we're doing the work on it. So before it just comes out of a reaction and we just, it's just us. This is just what I'm thinking. This is just the truth. I just speak this way. But after a while, if you start practicing, you realize that it's not really good for you. <laughs> so you stop doing it more and more and more and you start to shift your presence your personality even and you start to become a different person and you're still you you're not going to lose yourself but you have to get to be more of you not less of you so that's just the practice it's just more awareness of the thoughts and the words that come out of your mouth and then just kind of just allowing them to settle back down 
allowing yourself to only speak words of love as much as possible. And then it'll be the only thing that you do is possible. Thank you. I hope that didn't tweak too much. Actually, I get the feeling that it was, it was really good and you're still here because it resonated with you and uh, you feel good about it. So thank you for listening or watching and I hope you have a magnificent day. I love you. Bless you. Thank you.